First, it was Alabama. Surprise Supreme Court win for black voters. Soon it was also Georgia. And then it was Louisiana, too. All states where major court decisions called for the drawing of new congressional maps that would give black voters a chance at fair representation after Republican legislators drew up districts that deliberately locked black voters out of any reasonable chance of electing the legislators of their choice. These were all states where, where voters and voting rights groups were able to sue to get fair representation for black voters, and they were able to win. They won surprising, meaningful, consequential victories for black voters, thanks to the Voting Rights Act of 1965. The cases appeared to open a path toward undoing racially discriminatory congressional maps of the past, uh, state by state, one by one. Until now, until today. Today, a panel of three federal judges, all appointed by Republicans, uh, issued a decision in a case that was brought by the Arkansas chapter of the NAACP. It challenges the fairness of congressional maps there. And these judges in the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, they ruled that private citizens, private entities, private groups can't bring these cases anymore, can't bring the kind of cases that we have seen succeed in Alabama and Georgia and Louisiana and other states. The judges ruled that entities, private entities, can't bring those kinds of cases. Actually, the only entity that can bring those kind of a case, that kind of a case is the United States Attorney General. And if you can't get the United States Attorney General to bring a case like this on your behalf, then what happens in your state? And what happens to the cases that have been decided already? What happens to other states where voters want to challenge a racially discriminatory gerrymander of the congressional maps. How long before this case gets, the, gets to the United States Supreme Court and what's going to happen when it gets there? The new headline in the New York Times tonight is Federal Court Moves to Drastically Weaken Voting Rights Act. Um, passed in 1965, the Voting Rights Act was one of the most significant achievements of the civil rights movement, undoing decades of discriminatory Jim Crow laws and protecting against egregious racial gerrymanders. But the law has been under legal assault almost since its inception. Today, a federal appeals court moved to drastically weaken it. Should today's ruling stand, it would remove perhaps the most important facet of the Voting Rights Act. The majority of challenges to discriminatory laws have come from private citizens and civil rights groups. Joining us now is Janae Nelson. She's president of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Uh, Ms. Nelson, thanks very much for joining us, on, especially on short notice with this surprise ruling tonight. Happy to be here, Rachel. So let me just ask you, um, I feel like it, for the last 10 years, um, since the Supreme Court ruling in 2013 that really um, took a lot of the power of the Voting Rights Act away, we have been talking about this landmark piece of, of, of legislation, this sort of moral crucible piece of American legislation, as having been severely weakened. What is important about tonight's ruling um, as compared to the other attacks on the Voting Rights Act that we've seen from this conservative court? Well, tonight's ruling upends almost 60 years of precedent in which, as you noted, individuals and civil rights groups have enforced Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act to make sure that our country has a democracy that is free from racial discrimination. It's something that we've never fully achieved, but the Voting Rights Act and Section 2 in particular has done such muscular work to advance us toward this goal. And this is the first decision to say unequivocally that individuals and civil rights groups like the Legal Defense Fund cannot bring lawsuits under this key provision. And it's interesting that you bring up Shelby County versus Holder, which, as you noted, 10 years ago gutted what was the most transformative provision of the Voting Rights Act, Section 5. And in that decision, Chief Justice Roberts, in striking down that key part of the Voting Rights Act, pointed to Section 2 and said, you can still use Section 2 to vindicate your rights. There's still a vehicle to address racial discrimination in our elections. And yet, a panel of the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals in this country said no. Individuals, individual voters, citizens, civil rights groups, good government groups who have brought litigation under Section 2 for decades now can no longer do that. And the only possible uh, uh, vehicle 
is through the Department of Justice and the U.S. Attorney General. That is woefully inadequate for so many reasons. Not only does DOJ have limited resources and limited time and limited bandwidth, as we know, not every Department of Justice is the same. And in the last administration, we saw voting rights suits come to a screeching halt. In fact, the Legal Defense Fund had to step in and effectively be a Department of Justice during that period of that administration. We can't allow our voting rights to depend on the political whims or machinations of a particular administration. Individual citizens deserve the right to vindicate the right to vote, which is so fundamental to our democracy. Thinking about the um, movements on the right, uh, both in and outside of the legal system, that have sort of brought us to this place today. Um, it's hard not to, I think, ascribe the worst motives to this assault on the Voting Rights Act. I mean, the Voting Rights Act is designed to remove racial discrimination from the voting system. If you are trying to get rid of the Voting Rights Act, you are trying to get rid of protections against racial discrimination in voting. And it's very hard to get away from that simple, fundamental truth of it. But when it comes to this particular part of the way the Voting Rights Act works. Section two, which, as you say, allows groups like the Legal Defense Fund, allows groups, in, in, individual groups, allows other voting rights groups to bring these cases to test whether or not voting provisions are racially discriminatory. Is there some beef that the right has with that in particular? Is there some case that they feel like is particularly wrong? Or there's something that they think has been egregiously mishandled in the way that Section two has um, been operative in states across the country as for all the decades that this has been in place. You know, what's fascinating, Rachel, is that we've brought suits against Democrats and Republicans. We are a nonpartisan organization. We enforce Section 2 and all other provisions of the Voting Rights Act on behalf of voters to ensure that no matter who the actor is, no matter what party they might be affiliated with, that they don't trample on that fundamental right. So really, there's no reason to cast this in partisan terms. There's no reason for any party to feel that the Voting Rights Act is not a fair exercise of congressional authority to ensure that the 14th and 15th Amendments of our Constitution are honored when we talk about this critical right that undergirds our entire democracy. But of course, if you are prone to manipulating rules, manipulating districting lines, manipulating elections in every possible way to win against a majority of the people in this country, then yes, you might have a beef with the Voting Rights Act, but that is no way to run a democracy. That is no way to ensure that all voices are equally heard.